Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. I'm not sure what happened with the countdown there. A weird day. This is Kelly Fitzgerald. You're listening to Positive Vibes. This is a much, much, much different show than I usually do, and it is far light years away from the last show that I did here. So, um, you know, if you didn't like the last show, you will love this one. If you didn't, you know, if you loved the last show, maybe this was not your thing. Um, we're talking today about Laylee and the Elephants, and I have my good friend and amazing all-around person, Jody Doty, on the show with me today. <laughs> trying to hold down a cough, which is <laughs> not happening. So, <laughs> hi. <laughs> Thanks for doing this with me this morning. Good morning. It's great to be back on the show with you. I just, um, you have been instrumental in this whole project and moving it forward. So I thought you would be just the perfect person to come on and talk about the project. Um, When people ask me what the book's about, I tell them it's a love story. Um, and I don't think people are understanding that. So let's talk a little bit more about the story because I think really everyone can relate on some level to this story, whether you are a quote unquote normally able person or you are a differently able person. Every single person has felt left out from time to time. They felt ostracized, they felt alone. <laughs> Excuse me, that's going to keep happening. Um, but this story kind of addresses all of that. So how would you describe the story? Let's start with book one. How would you describe the story, where it starts to people? For book one, I think this is a, where she is bullied, Laylee is bullied, and kind of feels like she's never going to make a friend, um, that there's nobody out there for her. You know, we all, we all kind of have that feeling, uh, especially when you're a kid, like you're different and you're never going to fit in. And she actually runs away. And I think even as adults, a lot of times we kind of run away, um, thinking we can find uh, our friends, we find more of ourselves somewhere else. And and no matter where we run, we do come into ourselves. We find ourselves. And I love that that she finds um, um, Ott, the baby elephant, kind of stuck in the mud. And she's thinking, oh, I just want to help you. And it just reminds me that a lot of times when we want to rescue or we want to help others or we give of our kindness to others, that's when we often find it ourselves to save ourselves. And I just love that part of the story about, you know, she has a lot of her own issues that she's trying, running away from her, that she um, encounters um you know, right there with um, her elephant friend, Ott, and how uh, there's no way she could help lift him out of the mud, but at the same time, her wanting to help him. And I think, um, you know, I think that's part of the love story, too, is our seeing our loving others and the unconditional love for others, even when we're dealing with feeling unloved ourselves. I I think that's kind of where I was thinking when I wrote book one is um, people who are either very sensitive or they're very uh, different from other kids, especially as as children, uh, kids can be really mean to each other. And I've seen kids who were kind of pushed aside and nobody wanted to play with them or they were just too different to understand. I've been one of those kids as well. And seeing someone else, a very young person when this book, when the series started, um, that I love very much, going through the same things, kind of inspired the whole book. It, it is about love and kindness and compassion and thinking of the world as we are all connected rather than I'm me over here and that's different from you over there. Because really in our heart and soul, we are all one. We are 
all on this planet together. We're all trying to survive. We're all trying to find people to love and accept us. And sometimes the people who are the most ostracized are those ones who are seeking out other people to love and accept. So that's a huge part of the story. Um, And that's where it starts. That book two, honestly, is my favorite um, of the three that have been released. Book two is my favorite. Um, Finding the friend. I really, yeah, I really don't have a reason for for liking book two better. But um, in book two, we see Laylee having already made friends with the elephant and yes. some of the other jungle creatures. And she can't find them. And the one thing that I've heard from kids is how can you not find an elephant? Right. Well, it's it's, it's in the jungle. (laughs) um, In Thailand, a lot of them live in the jungle. And it would be, the jungle is so thick, it would be difficult to find anything, even an elephant. But, um, (laughs) you know, so Laylee is looking throughout the entire, her entire, her world, which is a very small area of Thailand, but she's looking everywhere nice. for the elephants and she can't find them. One of the things that every child I have read this book to, uh, I've read a lot in different schools, is um, they all want to know why she takes her shoes off. Yeah. And Laylee is deaf, so she would take her shoes off to be barefoot on the path so she could feel the vibrations that elephants make. Mm-hmm. And you can imagine they would have a pretty high, you know, pretty, pretty big vibration there if elephants were close. Sure. But that's why, that's why she takes the shoes off. I, I like that she uses her intuition and her, her gifts of, of, uh, of communication and nonverbal communication to connect or to feel. I love the, the term feel through her feet because that's what she does and, and that's how she also connects with the animals. But in that one, in book two, she also, I think what I like is that she has a lot of wonder about all these new um, animals that she's seeing. While she's looking for a friend, she's actually finding, um, you know, other other animals that um, she, she just is open for wonder and unity. And I do think it's funny, you know, a lot of times while we're looking for, for you know, we don't realize while we're looking for somebody else that they're also looking for us. And when we when we pause, we tend to find each other. Those that are supposed to connect to do. There is that unity. But I like the wonder of of the butterfly landing on her nose and and of her just being surrounded by other animals. And so sometimes we think we're really focused on we need to be with this group or the these people and yet there are others right there around us that are wonderful for us too if we're open and i I, that's what i like about her being open to you know the unity and that connection with the other animals and and i did like her um you know feeling the vibration through her feet and also you know um looking around at the you know at the sky and the, all the different animals yeah i i really enjoyed that book too yeah one one of the other things that kids and it's always a little boy who asks this i don't know what that says about little boys but in book 2 <laughs> laylee is taking bananas to her right. her elephant friend and along the way she meets squirrels and and birds and butterflies, and it gets to the monkeys. And this, a little boy in every class I've ever read this book to will say, why didn't the monkeys steal the banana? <laughs> I, well, I never thought about that. <laughs> but they didn't. She was sharing. I just, I and that's like another, that that's of, another. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I, I just find that interesting that it's always a little boy. And in every classroom, there is one little boy who asks that same question. That's funny. But there are monkeys. Oh, there. Yeah. If that's <laughs> what they would do. If they think, oh, well, if I were the monkey, that's what I would do. I would just go take right. that banana. <laughs> 
And yet it was such a nice gesture. This is another part of her kindness of thinking of others and what would, you know, what would the monkeys want or what would, what would, uh, you know, what would uh, other friends uh, appreciate? And maybe I could share my gifts and at the same time then they share their friendship with her. Right. And the the big thing I think about the few to everyone that I've spoken about it to has liked is that in the end, after she is looking, like you said earlier, the elephants find her. So while she is looking, they do find her. But um, it's also about her her personal journey. You know, she's yeah. looking, she's in the jungle looking for her friends. And instead of just really focusing on her friends, she does take the time to interact with the other animals. So I, I think that's a really big takeaway from this. Um, it's also, uh, little girls always say this, all the elephants love her, they found her. And, yeah. you know, it's, <laughs> it's um, in, in my heart, book two is really magical. Uh, and really, when we did the animated sample, we used book two for that animation. So, you know, book two is really resonating with me. Um, book three, the first three that have been released, is smoke. And one of the things that everyone has said on reviews is this is kind of a different kind of book. It kind of goes into a little bit, not necessarily dark, but of the, I guess, more human aspect of the jungle um, where, you know, there is smoke in the air. And while other animals would be running away from it, Lately, and ought run towards it. <laughs> Might be a little autobiographical there. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, this is part of her journey of finding the shadow side, or or facing your fear, and and doing it with others, and you know. But yeah, I did think that was funny. It's kind of like the you know. It, it, the firefighters that run into the burning building. <laughs> it's like, you know, it, it, and it's I just her. It's her. It's it's she, she is. She, she's a hero. I mean, that's a heroine. She wants to find out what's happening and she wants to help. And she, but I, I do like the symbolism of, of uh, you know, going down into the dark side or, or facing those uh, enviro- environmental fears or those, um, you know, and um, really looking and seeing what is this about. Instead of just going into fear and running, she she opens up to what is this. And um, you know, she's always curious, which I I love that about her. But I do think this is that going down the. It's not like the wonder of the other of the animals, or like kind of rescuing and helping and being with. You know, it's not like the first two. It really is different. It takes that kind of environmental side of her, that activist side of her, and the warrior part of her, really. Yeah. Yeah, and that she's dragging this elephant along behind her is really kind of funny to me. Um, she, it shows that she is a leader, even though she does yeah. not think she is. You know, she... She thinks, well, it's just two friends going to check out what's making the smoke. She doesn't realize. She's kind of dragging him into this. <laughs> it's um, it's an adventure. <laughs> it's an event, and he's a willing participant because he's a friend. And you know, when we're when we're having our challenges, our friends are with us. They go with us. They help us. They're they're there for us. And I I think I really appreciate that kind of unconditional love in the, in the smoke book of, of them being together in it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the fact that, you know, we, we are introduced to an orangutan group who sort of take a parental role in turning them around. It's like, no, 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 you don't want to go there. Come yeah. back with us. Go that way. <laughs> 
and yet they were in a in a fun way. So it's like you can yeah. face your fears, but but you can do it. You know, in you don't have to be fearful. You just have to be directive. And I did like that. I, I agree. I I like the parental like, hey, let's kind of go the other direction. Yeah. <laughs> follow me. When you start going me. that way, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> And it was nice yeah. because they didn't match the fear. They just kind of were like, okay, this is what's going on, and, and uh, let's all be brave and just go that way. <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah. save and, ourselves. You know, just the, the adventure of, you know, they're getting tired now because their adrenaline has run out. And, you know, they lay down and take a nap, not realizing they should probably still be running away from the fire, away from the smoke. They just, you know. Have you ever seen a, a child that just runs till they can't anymore and they fall down to sleep? That's kind of what happens right. here. <laughs> yeah. And so the uh, other elephants come to find them. And, you know, just like in book one where Laylee's mom was so excited to see her home safe, Ott's mother oh, yes. is really excited to see him and he's safe. And she's like, you know, I'm glad you're safe. Get up. Let's go. You know? So yeah. it's sort of... Yeah, there's a fire here. I do. Know. It's, <laughs> yeah, I do love the the mother nurturing aspect of both both Laylee's mom in the first book when she's uh, you know after Laylee spends the night you know in the jungle and her mom's I'm sure desperate where is she and then they reunite and also the mother elephant um, for us mother you know looking for Laylee and being nurturing it's that unconditional mom nurturing love I just really it just really resonated with me. One thing that kids have said, and this is probably my favorite thing that kids have said, is that Ott and Laylee are brother and sister because her mom would take care of him and his mom would take care of her. And for I kids love to realize that a mom is a mom is a mom is really, it really kind of reestablished my faith in humanity a little bit because Absolutely, I love that. Yeah, I love that. The things that kids have come up with about these books, it's it's kids are so honest, and they're so. This is what I think, and it's really been really nice and very touching to me to hear what kids think about the book. Yeah, they go, so they're divergent. They go, they go beyond the story into why is this happening and how could that, and, and what brings them together. It's like they, their yeah. imagination and, and their um, thoughts just uh, kind of go way beyond the words of the book and, and into the story. And then they see themselves, I think. I like that. A yeah. mom is a mom, yeah. whether it's an elephant mom or your mom. You know, and there are those in this world that will nurture and love us. And they may not be our family, but we have yeah. friends that support us, and they become our family. Yeah, and different species can interact with kindness and compassion towards each other. And that's kind of what I wanted to show in the book, is kind of let kids learn that animals need to be treated with love and respect. And for kids to pick that up without being told is is really amazing. I've had kids ask me what the orangutans' names are. They oh don't wow! Have names at this point. Um, I, I have had kids ask me where did Laylee get the bananas? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> I've had kids ask me if she feels vibrations through her feet. Why does she ever wear shoes? And yeah, that's a good these, question. Yeah, and these are questions that I've had from kids that I never would have thought of. I wouldn't have thought about addressing those kinds of things. But I think those are good conversation points for either parents to have with their kids or teachers to have with their students. But there's a lot in these books to unpack that isn't maybe obvious at first sight. Right. Absolutely. And kids pick that up. I like the intuitive part of the book where she where she uses her, her gifts are her gifts 
while she sees them kind of as um, as challenges, they're also her biggest strengths. And I think I think it's a good reminder for us that you know that we have to use our gifts and and to appreciate them and to uh, love the gifts of others. And I like the inner species, like you said, where we can all connect. Where kindness yeah. kindness transcends. It doesn't matter, you know. What, what the species is kindness is kindness and we need more of that in this world we do and we need more love and there is um so much that people talk about lacking in the world but i think anytime we can we have an opportunity and we can put a little bit of that love back i think we should do that and hopefully that's what these books do add a little bit more love in them so, yeah, so thank the kids, you guys pick, the kids pick up on that. You know, the kids, the kids basically they're pretty, they're pretty curious, they're pretty loving, and I and um, I think they definitely relate to Laylee and her her curiosity and her, and all these questions. I love that. What are the names? <laughs> so you know, it's one just one to a little kid go. One of the things that I wanted to mention, I almost forgot to mention, is. Um, One kid in particular asked me about deaf people because of Laylee. And his point was, if she were not deaf, would she be able to feel the vibrations of the elephants through her feet? And he said, I can stand outside barefoot and I don't feel anything through my feet. Wow. And that is what I mean by differently able. Yeah. Because everyone has gifts and talents. They're not always the same as ours. Doesn't make them any less. No. No. It's interesting that um, he put himself in, you know, how does that feel and why is that different? It's that it's that uh, wanting, that empathy and wanting to understand. And I think that's a beautiful thing. It is, and it's always kids between four and six. And it tells me a little bit about what schooling and society does to children as they start getting older and they let go right. of some of this ability. So. Yeah. I think we're going to end it here. I'm watching the the clock count down. So thank you (laughs) for doing this with me. Thank you so much. Absolutely. um, Thank you, everybody, for listening. There are links on the description for Laylee's website and where you can find all of the books that are available now on Amazon. Uh, You can really, you can find them anywhere that books are sold. So please do that. Uh, Laylee has a YouTube channel that is brand new. You would love more subscribers there. Laylee also has a website. Uh, uh, Sorry about that. Facebook page. That's what I meant to say. Um, So you will find Laylee everywhere. Thanks for listening. Please share the show. Please speak out Laylee and like and share and do all that wonderful stuff, information. Until next time, thanks. Bye. Make sure your home is ready for the Arizona heat with a preseason AC tune-up for only $89. Advanced Air Systems is anticipating a hot, busy summer. Stay ahead of the heat by taking advantage of this low-priced offer. Take your home comfort to the next level with an $89 AC tune-up from Advanced Air Systems. Call 928-216-2916 to get scheduled today. That's Advanced Air Systems, 928-216-2916. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BDW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.